12 geographic areas, these are vortexes, alleged by a scientist to have been sites of mysterious disappearances. The 12 devil's graveyards around the world. The Bermuda Triangle, Stonehenge, the ancient Egyptian pyramids, and the stone monuments on Easter Island all stand equidistant from each other, and each of them fits into the planetary grid of documented vortexes. All of these alleged devil's graveyards have been associated with unexplained phenomena dating back thousands of years. Is Alaska one of them? Oh, it is. Holy cow. How does it feel that you just flew through a devil's graveyard and lived to tell Oh my <laughs> God, <laughs> yeah. Something weird is going on here. I would like to talk to a vortex expert, mm -hmm. someone who really understands what a vortex is in the way that these guys are describing it. What is a vortex exactly? In general, a vortex is a spinning energy, like a hurricane. What happens to people in the Alaska Triangle? Well, I believe that we are susceptible to shifts in consciousness when we expose ourselves to these energies. You might possibly have hallucinations. You might have, uh, you know, lost time. Hallucinations and lost time could get one lost or uh, make them disappear. Right, well, lost time could potentially be an effect of consciousness. Do you think that the vortex is contributing to the people going missing in Alaska? I believe that it's possible. I don't think you can explain the, all the missing people. They, they haven't all been eaten by bears. How will we know when we're in a vortex? Different people experience it different ways. Some people have psychic sight. They can see the lines of energy. I tend to feel a tingling in my face when I come to, effectively, the boundary is where the energy tends to be strongest. You can think of like a spinning phonograph record and how fast it spins at the edges. There is a tool that you can use that uh, may help you to identify the vortex. This device is called the Golden Vortex. One of the researchers in my vortex research group has uh, discovered a certain arrangement of magnets. There are three magnets in here in a specific arrangement, and he claims that this is a portable vortex. One of the phenomena that you see at a vortex is that people will appear to change height. So if you have two participants on a perfectly level platform facing each other across the boundary of a vortex, you'll notice over time that there seems to be an apparent shift in the relative height of the two participants. We could do a little experiment here and see if the two of you experience any change in relative height. Okay. I don't want to be her height. <laughs> I'm happy. How tall are you? It's about six feet. And how tall are you? Five nine. Okay, well, I would suggest that you stand up on this nearly perfectly level platform here, a couple feet apart, and face each other. First, let me pull the vortex out of the equation, okay. and we'll just, uh, we'll do the vortex salute, which is, uh, you kind of put your, your hand here at your eye level, and you look as straight across as you can, and you notice, okay, I'm looking at the bridge of the person's nose. Notice that place where you're, okay. you're sure. looking at each other. And now I'm gonna put this vortex device in between the two of you here, okay. and we'll see. You know, age is gonna make me short enough. I don't necessarily need a golden vortex to help me along. Are, are you noticing any, any difference? You look taller. Are you gonna do it? You look taller to me. Yes. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> I've grown? <laughs> yes. I thought I was gonna get your height, but. No, I looked across and no, I was like, actually, I, I was that, that's true. I feel shorter than you, way shorter than normal. It's really weird. Kind of crazy, right? Believe me, this is not some trick of our cameras, but just wait, it gets better. Now, what if, weird. look at where you're, the other person's standing, uh -huh. and change places. Swip, switch okay. with switch each other? Switch places around the, the golden vortex. Oh my, I'm towering <laughs> over you now. Yes, you Am are. I? Yeah, you yeah, look I thinner, don't... too. Oh, good, that's good. <laughs> that happens, actually. Is this an optical illusion? 
I don't see how it can be an optical illusion in the ordinary way that we understand optical illusions. It may be purely visual phenomena, something like refraction, but it's also possible, I want you to consider the possibility that there's something physical going on. I promise this is not a special effect. In fact, our camera operators couldn't believe their eyes, and our camera equipment was going crazy and inexplicably malfunctioning. Something about this tiny vortex made the person standing on one side seem stretched out and thin, and the person on the other side seem short and compacted. We know magnets can pull at and stretch matter. Is it possible a magnetic anomaly that we don't fully understand could pull and stretch light? Our cameras seem to think so. I personally have no idea. But if a vortex the size of a quarter can do this to our equipment and our own eyes, imagine what a vortex the size of the Alaska Triangle can actually do. In Alaska, there's every characteristic that we would expect to find for vortexes. We find volcanoes, we find mountain peaks, we find glaciers, we find ore and mineral deposits, disappearances, extreme weather. We have the uh, atmospheric electricity and the electrical currents in the Earth. We find reports of cryptozoologic creatures. So there are any number of solid scientific reasons to expect that we're going to find some anomalous phenomena there. Cryptozoological creatures are animals whose existence has not yet been documented. This is not something we're telling you to believe. This is one culture's theory. So Scott is talking to someone whose ancient Alaskan ancestors have a cryptozoological explanation for the thousands of people who have vanished here over the centuries.